Hello guys, uh, my name is Abi Odun, and most people just call me AB or Abi for short. Uh, this is uh, building networking in the cloud, which is building uh, on AWS, building together. Mostly it's just about networking stuff. I'm going to be giving this training and it should be going from simple to advanced depending on the topics that I see that most people actually are kind of like struggling with on AWS. You know, you'll be very surprised at the, the, the little uh, technical stuff that people might need help with. And that's why I decided to be making videos on, on my lab experiences uh, on AWS so that people can actually get it. So today I'm, I'm going to be starting with just explaining the difference between a security group and a network case here. And uh, what I'm going to be doing with this training is just that um, instead of talking about it, instead of just showing a diagram and, and, and putting some writers, this is video of course, so I'm going to be doing some hands-on while explaining it, showing how it all works. For the complex networking stuff that I might be, that I'll be showing later on, it will probably have some diagram. I'll, I'll show some diagram of the topology that I'm trying to set up. But because this is just simple, so I'm just going to be going straight uh, into it, explaining the NACU and the security group, the NACU, which is the network ACL, and the security group, which is the health G. So if you look at my my screen now, so if you look at my screen now, and uh, for the record, I, I I don't think it's it's really important, but I just want to put a face to the to the whole video thing. So uh, apologies for the lights. I just have to do this uh, when my children are already sleeping, <laughs> because if I decide to do it during the day, I'm sure I wouldn't have anything to record. So uh, pardon the lights. I hope I will have to do this. Uh, during the day sometime, maybe when the school resumes after this whole virus thing has gone. But I believe the most important thing is what I, uh, I'll be showing on the on the screen. So if you work with me now, I have an instance in Island region, region as you can see here. And I also have another screen that is open to Canada region which is going to be the other side that I'll be showing. But first, if you look at this, this island region here, I have my, I have my, my public instance, which is, which has the public IP address of this. It has a public IP address of this. So I'm going to be looking into it. You can see that I have It's, it's in this VPC, this is a uh, spoke VPC. This instance was what I was using to test the transit VPC. And I have the security group here, which is uh, a, a name, it doesn't matter. Whatever name you, you want to give to it. This is of course another time I was trying to, to test a VPC pairing a long time ago. So if you look at the security group, we have the security group. I can just open it to, to another page. So this is a security. Okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah. I guess it's just trying to happen. The security group here. You can see I have a security group that is attached to this instance. And at the same time, this is the is is instance that I have in in Canada region. The same thing also has a security group, which is called NATS uh, security group. It doesn't matter. You can give it any name that you like, actually. So if uh, if you look at the security group, I have I have a bunch of a bunch of uh, permit rule, which is the the inbound rule is saying that permit all traffic. You don't want to do this, especially if this is in the production environment. You want to restrict as much as possible. And uh, 
if I look at the one in the Canada region, let me just open the security group to another tab. So this is a security group. You can see it. Yeah, it's, it's called the VPC ID that and uh, okay. So we look at the security group on the inbound group. I have the same thing, allowing all traffic. This you don't want to do. You want to restrict it to, but depending on, on what you're running anyway, if the instance is supposed to be, if it's supposed to be acceptable to all, where, where it, depend, it depends on the use case, but mostly, most people are, are, are you know, uh, skeptical about doing something like this. So it's better to understand your network environment uh, deeply. So I'm going to be, just uh, trying to explain what this is. So first and foremost, a security group is different from NACU in that if a security group, it's stateless. For First of all, you, you need to understand, so I'm going to be going over it bit by bit. So security group is, uh, is it's, it's acting like a firewall like you have a firewall which is stateful, which means that anything you allow to come in, you don't have to, for example, if we go to the security group for the Highland EC2, which I named the public, if you look at the, the security group, it's saying that everything, I'm allowing everything to come in the inbound direction. And for the outbound route, the same thing. If you allow anything inbound, you don't have to, allow them outbound. They're going to make sure that when the return traffic for this particular uh, stream is going back out, I'm going to ensure that I, I allow it back out. That is security group. And I'm going to show you in a moment. So, so we just try to log into this is a two instance, which is the one in the uh, kind of central, the EU central region, the Canada region. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to bring out my, my terminal. So this is Canada. So as you can see, if I try to ping the, if I try to ping the, the EC2, the public IP of, of the Highland, I should be allowed to reach. Now, that is what's, what is expected anyway. But what if we do something like this for the, for the uh, security group? Now I'm only going to put, I'm going to leave the inbound as it is, and I'm going to remove these. And the way the security group works is that there's no deny statement. You either allow it or you don't. If you don't, if you don't put an allow list, there, it automatically sees it as a deny. It's just like firewall, which has the implicit deny all rule at the back of it. So, if I decide to remove these and I save it, you would expect that the the, the traffic shouldn't work, right? But by the time we we test it, we can see that it's still working because it looks at the packet. It says that okay, you have the packet coming in. I'll make sure that when you, when the return traffic, when the EC3 instance, when the, when the Highland instance is trying to return back to you, I'll make sure to allow it back out. And there's no problem with that. And that is exactly what we want to see. The problem would be if, if uh, Ireland is trying to get out to the Canada EC2, because it doesn't have anything at the outbound route, that might be a problem. So if we if we try to log into to the to the island region, so this is what the problem will be facing because there's no outbound route. So we we've got to really understand this. If if the ping uh, if the traffic is being originated from the the security group that that does not have anything at its outbound, it's going to fit. But but if it's not the one originating the traffic, but the traffic is coming from another 
instance or coming from another device at the on-premise and it's coming to it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't have the hard bandwidth, it will be allowed out. So, so you know, some, some people do something like this, maybe the instance, depending on the use case, you know, you can do whatever you, you like in the cloud with your instances. Some people can actually have it in, in a way that they don't want this instance to ever go out by itself. Nobody should originate any traffic come from that instance, but it should accept any traffic coming inside. So that is fine by them. So they remove the outbound rule, which is cool if that is what you want. But in this case, you can see how you can typically understand what the how the security group works. So in case you fall into, you're trying to build something because you've done, you, you've created a lot of things together and you discover that you are not able to communicate. These are the things that you should be able to, to look at. You should be able to try to see, okay, what is missing? What am I missing? And it depends on how this operation goes about that you'll be able to find that, oh, this is what might be the problem. Because you see that, okay, I, I, I realize that if I do a ping, or if I send traffic from this instance to that instance, or from this on-premise to that particular instance, it, it's working, but I can't seem to get anything hard from that instance. You know, let me don't say that instance so that you can understand. If you notice that you have a situation like mine, you have an island region, you have a Canada region, I decide that you can, from Canada region, ping an instance in the Highland region. Everything is working fine, but but the same instance, when you try to go out from it, it seems that nothing is working. Then you should try to look at, oh, okay, the first thing I should do is, let me check the security group. And this is how you'll be able to find that. Now, how is this different from the NACO? NACO we call the ACF. So if we look at the, the VPC region, of course you can come here and also, Look at the security group, you can see this is new. They just added this option to because they, they don't want people moving uh, because this Elastic IP, you know, it used to be on the EC2 console, but they don't want people navigating back and forth because you you would like to access your NACU and your security group at, at the same place. You don't want to keep moving back and forth. So that's why they they actually added the, the security group here also, which is cool. Which is very cool. So if you look at the, the NACO, NACO works differently than the security group. NACO, as it's called Network ACL, it does the same thing as the name, access list. So an access list is stateless, unlike the security group, which is stateful. Access list is stateless. So anything you allow inbound, you've got to allow it outbound. You can't it doesn't it doesn't work like the security group. For example, let's look at the EC2 instance. Let's see if we can see which which network ACL is actually applied to it. So if we cannot see that directly from here, we can see the subnet because NACO also work on the subnet, not the ENI. Uh, I don't know if I'm going deep in this one, but I might have to make a, a separate video to show you how our security is being applied on the subnet rather than the ENIs. Basically, I'm just going to, uh, so if you look at these subnets, you can see subnet F00. And if you look at this, you see the associated subnet with it. We we'll look at this is the default VPC. Uh, I'm not working with this, I'm working with the other one, which just has, has two subnets. Even if you bring your mouse here, you can see the subnet is applied, the ACL is applied to two subnets. You don't see that with the security group. So the subnet we are interested in is this first one here. It's the second one here, rather. The first one will probably be the private subnet because I'm I'm testing from the public subnet now. You know, it's good to keep your architecture simple and easy in case you want to uh, so that when you're troubleshooting, you know, you know, you have your private subnet, you have your your public subnet, you're able to differentiate between them. And as a matter of fact, let me just quickly tell you the difference between private and public subnet. A private subnet is no is not a subnet than just a subnet where you don't have an IGW associated with. No IGW. You can, the instances you launch in a private subnet, 
you cannot attach an elastic IP to them. In short, you cannot give them a public IP because they won't work. So a private subnet, if they still need to go to the internet, you put a NAT gateway. Either you put a NAT gateway or you put a NAT instance. If anyone wants me to talk more about that, you can drop me a message in the comment and I'll be happy to should do a video on that. For a public subnet, you it's, it's a subnet where you have an IGW, the internet gateway associated with. So that's just uh, in brief. So we look at this, we can see that this is the ACL that we have for these two subnets. And uh, if you look at the inbound, you see, it's just like your normal traditional access list. It says all traffic, the protocol is all, port range is all, source is it. Anywhere you're coming from, I'll allow you. Now, there's an, there's an outbound rule. You can see the hard boundary is also saying this, just like we, see, we we saw on the security group. But then if I should take this out from the island uh, subnet ACL and I ping from the Canadian, it will not work because ACL are stateless. Now we can quickly grab a look at this. You can see that the subnet is associated with it. You can see, like I told you, spoke a subnet private. This is this, and this one that is not private, it's what I call public. And so it's a uh, correspond with the with the instance subnet. So let's give it a try. So if I take out this, I did this, and I decide to take the rule on red out and I save what you have is a deny statement. Yeah. Again, for me, and I try the ping. It's not gonna work. See, it's failing, but let's just do this immediately. If I edit it and I had a good one on the right to it, just like the other rule that was the, the, the previous rule, we saw allow any, any. And if you look at it, let's just give it a turn while I apply. You see, the ping start working. So, this is stateless. Anything you allowed inbound, you have to allow it outbound. So my advice to people that actually, you know, build networking stuff on AWS is, is that leave your ACL the way it is, but they allow, allow everything. Except you really have a special requirements, you know, by the management, by the, by the, uh, by your IT managers. If, if not, leave your network ACL the way it is where you should put security measures, you try it on the security group, leave the ACL because you can really complicate things on the ACL, on the ACL. But if you really know what you're doing, you're an expert, you understand what you're doing, then you can go ahead and put some, some street security measures. But most of the time you realize that everything you need, it's just from the security group to, to block anyone else. The the ACL works better when you are dealing with uh, with security bit between subnets. If you're trying to blow, you are in a particular VPC and you have different subnets, you don't want all the subnets to talk to each other, then you can put some, you can try to restrict from that uh, ACL. We can try to restrict from the ACL on the subnet because that is not going to work with the security group. Uh, then you know I was planning to do this on a, on a new on a, on a separate video before, but why not? This the ENI on instance your security group only applies to the ENI, not the subnet. Applies to the instance itself. You cannot apply a security group to to the subnet to the full subnet. You apply a network ACL to the subnet. So that's just the difference between the two, and. Uh, I'll be happy to answer more questions in the comment line if maybe I miss anything. But so far, so good. That's the difference between the security group and the network is here in, in, in practice. And I will, like I said, I'll be making from, from, from basic videos to expert videos, uh, talking about the transit gateway, the direct connect gate, uh, the direct connect gateway, the direct connect, virtual interfaces, how they work. We're talking about some BGP and, and, and the rest on network and stuff. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, you, can, you can subscribe at the button below and to enjoy more of these videos. Thank you.